Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are safe and sound, and today, in this video, we will be discussing the words of our president, Mr. Florentino Perez, and we are going to assess how he plans to save football. It's all haywire at the moment. Obviously, the majority of the football world, the fans stand against the idea of the Super League, but let's dive into the business-minded brain of our president. Let's go through his words that he emphasized upon as he gave an interview on El Chiringuito, and let's get started. To start the interview, Mr. Perez was first asked to explain the new European Super League. He was asked who came up with the idea of the Super League. He replied, nobody set up anything. The important clubs in England, Italy and Spain have to find a solution to a very bad situation that football is going through. We have lost 5,000 million and that is very bad. Last year we had a budget of 800, we finished in 700 and this year instead of 900 we will see if we enter 600. In two seasons 400 less and these stats are only of Real Madrid. We are going through a very bad situation situation. And then Mr. Perez answered the question of when the clubs came up with the idea. He said, when you have no income other than television, you say that the solution is to make more attractive matches that fans from all over the world can see with all the big clubs. And we came to the conclusion that if instead of doing a Champions League, we do a Super League, we would be able to alleviate what we have lost. So from these initial statements, it's quite evident that this move has clearly been triggered by the current pandemic situation and the inability of the clubs to generate revenue as they cannot get money in from the sale of tickets. Moving on, Mr. Perez further explained why there is an urgency to go ahead with the project because he believes the young generation is losing interest. He says, football has evolved like companies, people, mentalities. Networks have changed the way they behave and football has to change and adapt to times we live in. Football is losing interest. You can see the audiences are decreasing and rights are decreasing and something has to be done. We are all ruined. Football is global and these 12 teams and some have fans all over the world. Televisions have to change so that we can adapt. Young people are no longer interested in football and why not? Because there are many poor quality matches and they are not interested. They have other platforms to distract themselves. He further went on to back the decision to bring changes as he said, whenever there are changes there are always people who oppose it. It happened to Bernabeu and the history of football change. You ask what's so attractive about this competition is that we play among the greats, competitiveness, more resources are generated. The rich me, I do not own Real Madrid, we are a football club and we do this to save football which is at a critical moment. Now from these words we can clearly see he's batting on behalf of the young generation. He's saying that the young people are losing interest but I find it very hard to believe. I don't know from which island he has got the data that young people are losing interest, but clearly he's using that to legitimize the project. Then Florentino Perez was asked about the accessibility of the competition to the non-founding members. He said, five will come from Sporting Merit. It's open. It's not closed league. We believe in the merits of all teams. But talking about this, it's hard to understand how it's open-ended when you see that the founding members have no threat of relegation whatsoever. What if a team like Arsenal, Spur, Liverpool, Chelsea, Atletico are the five teams at the bottom of the pile? Why shouldn't they be relegated? Now the thing with this competition is, it's going to generate massive money, no doubt about that. But the problem is, it's so anti-competitive. Teams like Arsenal, Spurs, these people have not been able to show elite level football and why should they deserve a place amongst the elite every year? Why not Leicester? Why not West Ham? Why not Sevilla? Why should these teams not be rewarded? Now I understand that there may be some who are very much embracing the idea of the ESL, but I would like to give you an example here. Suppose there was a company in which you got recruited. You were selected along with 20 other people as well, and you want to do well in order to get a pay raise and a promotion. But then you find out that the three of them from the new recruits already have big connections with the high authority, and they are surely going to be rewarded whether they work properly or not. So at this point, will you be happy? Will you be saying it's fair competition? Your chances of success are so less and it got even more tough for you. Will you be motivated to make the rags to the riches journey? You already know the system is unfair and you already know things are designed in such a way that all the odds are against you. So think about this example when you come in support of the ESL. This is just like the times of the kings and queens when they wanted to keep the money, keep the gold, keep the property concentrated in one family. In the same way, these clubs want to keep the money to the themselves and no one gets a chance, doesn't matter how well they perform, to have a bite at the cherry. The deserved should thrive, the right of equal opportunity should be upheld at any cost. But coming back to the interview, Florentino further went on to speak about the benefits of the ESL as he said, their games of poor quality, a Barcelona Manchester is more entertaining than a Manchester
Manchester against a more modest Champions League team. You have to ask, what does the whole world demand? We have fans all over the world. That is what makes money. Others do not give money. Competitions and that money is for everyone. This is a pyramid. Those of us at the top have money, but if the money is not generated, it does not exist. Mr. Perez also repeatedly emphasized that they want to save football and then he said, we will try to start as soon as possible. We are going to talk to UEFA and FIFA. I don't know why they have to get angry. UEFA is working on another format that firstly I didn't understand it and then it doesn't produce the necessary income to save football. When I say save football is to save everyone, what we want who have inherited it from the Bernabeu is to save football so that for the next 20 years at least it can live in peace. The situation is very dramatic. Moving on, Mr. Perez also went on to address the concerns of the players. There are threats from UEFA and FIFA that those who would be a part of the ESL will not be allowed to join the national team. To this, Mr. Perez said, they threaten them, but the players can be calm because this will not happen. Those who run monopolies, UEFA have to be transparent. UEFA does not have a good image. I do not want to mention things that have happened in UEFA, but it has to be a dialogue and non-threatening. They have presented a format that nobody understands and they say that they will start in 2024. But in 2024, we are dead. There are clubs who have lost hundreds of millions. So clearly we can see from these words, it's all about the money and nothing else. It's not about saving football, it's about increasing the chances of generating money and that's it. The way the industry has been running in the past few years is absolutely shambolic. They are literally playing with money. It all began with the Neymar transfer to PSG and since then, the amount of money that is being pumped into this business is just ridiculous. Average, below average players are being traded at 60 70 million and the football is following a very dark path which is simply driven by money and worse the gap that we speak about in the society the rich getting richer the poor getting more poor this will be seen in the football world as well the competition effectively will be killing the small clubs and one more thing that i want to point out is how poorly these people have been managing the clubs they have literally run the clubs to the ground taking debts from all sorts of institutions and now since they cannot cover the repayment of their debts this is the new thing they want to come up with and lastly you if and FIFA, these people are acting innocent, but it's because of these people that the clubs are fed up. The players are fed up. They have been doing all sorts of things irresponsibly, and now they are asking the clubs to take a moral high ground. We have to say that together these people have corrupted the beautiful sports behind the curtains, and now they are demanding a show of ethics from the opposite party. It's shambolic, absolute shambles. Moving on, Mr. Perez also went on to talk about the possibility of shortening the game. He said, young people say that the game is very long for them. Madrid has been around since 1902. Sometimes we do not understand each other with other grandchildren or with politicians. They are new generations and we must make an effort to understand them. If people say the game is too long or the game is not good, it has to be shortened. So that is a very interesting thing to say because before we talk about the fans, the actual people who would be in the center of all this would be the players. Now we know the players, the coaches have been consistently speaking about how so many games have been crammed up and with the Super League, the fixtures are just going going to increase. There would be 38 La Liga games, 20 games of the ESL, there is a Copa del Rey and international friendlies, and finally at the end of the season there would be international tournaments. This will take a lot out of the players, so maybe a 60 minute game or a 70 minute game, this can be on the cards in the near future. But the big question is, are the players on board with this? Have the clubs even spoken to the players before coming to this decision? Because currently it's looking like these businessmen have come together and thought, alright, this is one of the sure short ways of making revenue so let's go ahead with this plan so the bottom line is we love football we love our team we want reforms to make football better but the way in which these businessmen are going about this project is completely wrong they are just concerned about themselves and they are just protecting their interests and worst of all majority of the football fans don't feel like football is dying but they are creating a narrative that we are the ones demanding it the super league can be a good idea and yes we may not have the novel feeling when we watch the two big teams collide again and again every season but we can't deny we will be seeing some high quality football. But the problem is you have to earn your place in the Super League. Just because you're in a privileged position doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want. You have to prove your worth to participate in this competition. You have to show that you are the top three or four teams in your own league and that is why you have come to the Super League to fight and be the kings of Europe. The way it is right now it's discriminatory in nature and we can't go about things like this. Those elite spots should be open for all and teams who are showing average performance 
performances in their own leagues don't deserve to have a sure shot place in this competition. So those are my thoughts on this topic. Now obviously we will be seeing many rounds of negotiations between UEFA, FIFA and these clubs. So this Netflix series is going to continue for some time. But surely these people could have found a better time to fight this war. We are in the most crunch phase of the season and how is that going to affect the players? They have been working so hard trying to win a trophy for the fans and this drama could have been postponed at least to the end of the season. So those are the current happenings. Do let me know your thoughts on the Super League. Are you in favour? Are you against it? Do let me know in the comments below. I'll see you tomorrow for the match preview of Real Madrid vs Cadiz. Till then, take care, glory to Madrid and as always, a la Madrid.